Kakadosh, Bokatov. I wanted to share with you a beautiful idea from Rav Chida. The Rav Chida comes and he asks an incredible question. Listen to this question. The question is, is that in the beginning of the parasha, it says, Yitzchak ben Abraham. Abraham Yitzchak. This is the children of Yitzchak. Abraham had Yitzchak. And then it says that Rivka was barren. Rivka was sterile. And Yitzchak was praying Lenocha Chishto. The Gemara actually learns out that the fact that it's written that he prayed Lenocha Chishto and not on his wife, not on behalf of his wife, but opposite his wife, right? That's why it says Lenocha instead of on, Al Ishto. It means that they were both barren. They were both sterile. So you have a couple that they are both sterile. But the Torah says that Yitzchak was praying for Rivka, meaning Yitzchak was focusing his prayer on Rivka and it doesn't mention anything, right? About what? About the Drivka praying for Yitzchak. It only says, and it doesn't mention that Yitzchak is praying for himself. It only mentions the importance of Yitzchak praying for Rivka. So the question is, why? Why is it like that? So there was a beautiful answer, and then I'll give a, another few answers later on. A beautiful answer given by Rav Chida, and he says as follows. He says, there was actually two reasons why Rivka was barren? The Gemara says, why is it that the forefathers, or the, why were they barren? It was Hashem wanted to hear a tefillot. Since he wanted to hear a tefillot, so therefore, they had to be barren. So, Sarah was barren, Rivka was barren, Rachel was Okay, they wanted to hear the tefillot. Perfect. But now what happens by Rivka? There was another reason why Rivka was barren. You know why Rivka was barren? Because of the biracha of her brother. In last week's parasha, right, listen to this. In last week's parasha, it says, by Rivka, they blessed Rivka. Lavan comes and he blesses Rivka. What is the blessing to Rivka? What does that mean? You should become multitudes. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to show us that the Berachah Varasha, don't think that she became pregnant because of Berachah Varasha. So therefore, not only naturally was she sterile, was she barren, now there's another reason to be barren. So therefore, it wasn't enough just to come in a regular tefillot to break through. You needed stronger and more and more tefillot to come and to break through. You have to be insisting. You have to insist. You have to come. You have to, again, pray and pray and pray and pray. And that's when it happens. So now, according to this, comes the Rav Chidani says, sometimes we see people that they start praying. And they could be praying for Parnasa, They could be praying for children. They could be praying for Shiduchim. And it doesn't work. And they're praying and praying and praying. And they're not answered. And they don't see the salvation. And they don't understand why. Says the Rav Chida, sometimes you see from here that we don't know the reasons why. Because here, if it was just because he wanted to fill up the Tzadikim, they were praying. Yitzchak was praying, Rivka was praying. But here there was another reason. Because to counteract the Berachav Lavan, purposely she wasn't going to have children at the beginning. In order that, so what did he have to do? He had to insist on tefillah. He had to be mamash like that with all the pers- perseverance, continue going and going and going. Tefillah, 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 lafzir, to insist in it. That's when you're going to get answered. So there was a beautiful story brought down that there was a rabbi, right, that he was going on a plane. And what happened was all of a sudden the plane was uh, delayed. So the plane is delayed. They said, you know what, instead of praying on the plane, right, which you could do, but it's not the best, we're going to pray in the terminal. So they went, they got a minyan, they started praying. So after, now what happened was, is at the beginning, why did they decide that? Because they went and they said, the plane is going to be delayed for, for you know, going to be delayed. All of a sudden they come. And they say, ah, we're boarding. Everyone start boarding. So all of a sudden, they just started Amidah. So there were some people that they went. And after one minute, you know how it is. Uh, plane is boarding. Boom. Tefillah Ketzara, as they say. A short Tefillah. And they ran. They went, went on top of the plane. Went running. This rabbi, he started Amidah. He started Amidah. So he prayed his seven, eight minute Amidah. And he's praying and praying and praying. Perfect. He doesn't care. All the people are already boring, boarding. Doesn't care. He goes up, and when the rabbi finishes the Amidah, and he goes up, we're doing Arvit, 
right? They finish Sharvit, he goes onto the plane, he turns around and he realizes that there's still a girl, right? That she was in the corner and she's still praying. So he comes inside and he tells the head stewardess there, listen, do me a favor. There's still people that were praying. You guys gave, you know, at the beginning you said it was delayed and afterwards you gave such short notice. Can you wait? So he goes, you know what? We'll give them five minutes. Five minutes I give you in order to come and in order to, to pray, uh, to, to basically to, for them to come on. After the five minutes came, what happened was, is they went and they locked the doors. And the rabbi is looking. The girl didn't come on. What can you do? Fine. So you couldn't do anything else. All of a sudden, they start, they start going to take off. Yeah, the, the plane starts and everything. And all of a sudden, smoke comes from underneath. Smoke starts coming out. They're, uh, uh, the captain, uh, everyone out. Everyone's going back to the terminal. Okay. So they go out to the terminal. When he went back into the terminal, finally he comes and he realizes that the girl just finishes her amida. The girl just finishes her amida. After two, three minutes, again, they come and they say, okay, everyone come back inside. They come back inside, and now the rabbi comes and he says, right, to the girl, listen, how did you do this? Right? Like, I don't understand what's going on. I'm saying, you knew you were going to miss your flight. How did you continue saying tefillah? So the girl comes and she says, listen, rabbi, I'm going to tell you something. I'm already more than 30 years old, and I still don't have a shiduch. And I accept it upon myself that whenever I do a midah, I pray with my entire heart, it doesn't matter what. She said, I had a terrible nisayon. I had a terrible trial. I realized I was going to miss the plane. But I had a Kabbalah. I accepted it by myself. And therefore, I had to say to myself, I'm going to pray like I always pray. And nothing's going to change. And then, Baruch Hashem, Hashem showed me that He actually saved me. Because I didn't miss my flight. I'm right here. So the rabbi was all impressed. So he goes back onto the plane. And finally, when he goes back onto the plane, he comes and he tells Right? He comes and he tells them, he tells the head towards the pilot there, what happened to the plane? So he went and he said, listen, you should know, we have no clue. Smoke just started coming out, but we have no idea. And the smoke just disappeared. There was nothing. So he went and he told the head steward there, he went and he said, listen, you know what? I'm going to tell you the real reason why the plane didn't go. There was this girl that she was praying and Hashem wanted you to wait for her. You waited the five minutes and she still didn't finish. And because of that, what happened was, is he made sure that you're going to wait. So he made the problem in order for it to wait. So, okay, it's a beautiful story, no? Beautiful, okay. But it doesn't finish there. The rabbi is speaking to this steward. He was a goy. Oh, sorry, he was a Jew, but he wasn't religious. So he starts, being, he starts telling him, by the way, I'm going to the diaspora because I'm going to give a shiur to be mekarev rechokim. It's a seminar. We try to bring people closer to Hashem. Why don't you come? The guy comes. He says, yeah, okay, maybe you know what? Okay, you know what? He was very motivated. He said, you know, he, he thought it was too weird. How could it be that the plane smoke just start coming up? The girl comes into the plane. Now everything's fine. Like things just don't make sense. He saw something. He went to the shiur. He was Choser B'Tshuva Shlema. He went to Israel. He went to Yeshiva. He was Choser B'Tshuva. And after a year, they come and they're going to make him a shiduch. Who's the shiduch that they gave? The girl that because of her, he was Choser B'Tshuva. This girl, she was praying, but why? So he comes and he says, the rabbis come and they say a beautiful saying. You see from here that tefillah is not just praying. Tefillah is insisting in praying. Tefillah means you have to continue praying, continue praying. Why? Because sometimes we pray and we're not answered. Remember, no tefillah ever goes empty-handed. All the tefillot are answered. And if it's not for somebody, it's for the, somebody else. It, it's always there. But sometimes you have to insist. And why sometimes you have to insist? Because sometimes we don't realize the power of the tefillah. Because sometimes we don't realize that there's another reason why. So here Rivka, if she was just naturally barren, so fine, she could have prayed. And then Hashem would have listened to her. Why? Hashem wants the tefillah of the tzadikim. But here there was an extra reason why she was sterile. Because of the bracha of her brother. And we didn't want that, that everyone's going to say, why does she have children so easily? Because the bracha of this rasha, because the bracha of this lavan, it actually had a lot of fruits. So that's the first part of Zat Hashem and the of the Shiur Shabbat Shalom. Kakadosh, Boketov, Chodesh Tov. I was once asked a very interesting question, which I'm sure you all remember, which is as follows What tefillah is more powerful? 
is it the tefillah of a tzaddik or a rabbi, a big rabbi for you? Or is it tefillah of the person themselves? Okay. Now, why are we, why is it connected to this week's parasha? So in the beginning of the parasha, it says, that Hashem, right, that Yitzchak starts praying to Hashem because she's barren. Hashem listens to him and she becomes pregnant. So from the pasuk, we have two questions. First of all, why is Yitzchak praying only on Rivka and not on himself? Because as I already mentioned, Yitzchak and Rivka were both barren. So why is Yitzchak only praying on Rivka and not on himself? And number two, right? Why isn't Rivka praying for herself? Because the Torah doesn't mention it. So the Gemara actually is Doresh, and it says, since it says Lenochach and not Al, meaning it should have said that Yitzchak is praying Al Ishto on his wife, meaning it's only his wife. But when it says Lenochach opposite, it means they were both in the same situation. So she was sterile and he was sterile, but we still have to understand. So the question is, why is it that Yitzchak did not have to pray for himself? So the Zohar Kadosh, which you just previously mentioned, says Yitzchak prayed for his wife and not on himself because he saw Beruach HaKodesh that Yaakov Avinu was going to have 12 Shivatim and they were going to come out from him. So Yitzchak already knew he's going to have children. So therefore, for himself, he knows he's going to have children. He already saw it in Ruach HaKodesh. Because if Yaakov has 12 children, it means that it comes from him. So therefore, what's the problem? He thought that maybe Chas Shalom would have to be like what his father did. He thought that maybe he would have to get married to another woman. And since, and so he didn't know. So because that he wanted it specifically from Rivka. He wanted that his children should come from specifically from Rivka. And that's why whether it's the Chisfuni, the Riva, the Rami Kutsi, the Chaim Palti, the Sforno, everyone says Yitzchak already knew that the problem was not in him. But Hashem already said, Ki He told Abraham Avinu, Yitzchak is going to have the children. And everything is going to come from Yitzchak. So he knew, Yitzchak knew, I don't have a problem. My problem is with my wife. Because if it's going to be with her, so I'm going to have to get married to somebody else and have the children through somebody else. And he wanted it specifically through her. So that's why Yitzchak didn't pray for himself. However, though, what we did mention before was, right, whose prayer is stronger? Is it the person himself or somebody else? So let's look at another question, right, or another place where we just saw a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago, we saw that Agan and Ishmael, they get lost, right? When Abraham Avinu sends them away, they get lost, Agan and Ishmael. And it says that they both started praying to Hashem. But he said, Kola Batef, she comes and she raises her voice, she starts crying. But then the Torah says, Hashem listens to the voice of the child. Now the question is, why is it that Hashem listens to the voice of the child and not to the voice of? Hagar, Hagar was also praying. His mother was praying for him. So why is he only listening to his voice? So says the, from here, Rashi brings down, Says Rashi, a person praying for himself when he's sick is stronger than somebody else praying for them. So the question is, if you're going to tell me that a person's own supplications, a person's own tefillah is stronger than somebody else's tefillah. So why by us was Yitzchak answered because he prayed for Rivka and not Rivka answered because she prayed for herself? That's the question. Everyone understood the question? So now we have, right, something called a question on the question, right? We're very Jewish, which is, En chavush matire tatzmo mibeta asurim. Do you know that a person, if they're in jail, they can't free themselves from jail? Whenever you have a jailbreak, you always have somebody from the outside, right? That they have to help you to get out of jail. We saw this in many, many different times, right? Whether it's, and this is brought, brought down, by the way, the Mizrahi, the Bartunur, they all asked on this, right? From the Gemara. The Gemara says, Rabbi Yochanan went and he went to visit Rabbi Chia Bar Abba. He became sick. Rabbi Yochanan comes and he asks him, right? There's a Gemara in Berachot. Right? So he asks him, so I'm sure Mauricio will get there soon. So he comes and he asks them, one second. He says, do you like suffering? Do you like it? He says, I don't want to. I don't want the suffering and I don't want the reward. Rabbi Yochanan comes, he extends his arm and immediately he caught him up. He pulled him out and that's it. It went away all the sufferings. But now immediately afterwards, Rabbi Yochanan comes and he goes to visit his student, Rabbi Lazar. 
the exact same thing. Now Rabbi Yochanan is sick. And Rabbi Hanina comes to visit him. And he tells him, do you like it? Rabbi Yochanan says, the exact same thing. Lohem, lo Now Rabbi Hanina comes, reveals his arm, picks him out, and he takes him out. So Gemara asks, Ayuwa, Rabbi Yochanan, you just did it to two or three different people. Why didn't you just take yourself out of it? So the Gemara asks, why didn't you cure himself? The Gemara answers these words, En chavush matir et bet asurim. A person that's in jail, he can't jailbreak without help from the outside. Which means that a person that's already there, he can't do it. This is also brought down by David Melech. David Melech was once, he was, um, he was once put into a certain spell. It was a whole thing, but he couldn't save himself because he was the cult, he was the one that's in it. Once you're in it, you can't save yourself. You need somebody from the outside, even though he could have done it. He knew it also, but he can't save himself. It has to be done to an outside person. So the question now that we ask ourselves is, so when is it going to be better? Okay, when is it going to be better? So, just, so in order to answer this, okay, there's going to be three different answers. Okay, what are the three answers? Listen carefully. Answer number one is going to be the Mizrahi and the Bartanura. They come and they say like this. Really, Be'emet, right? Whose tefillah is answered? The tefillah which is answered is always the person that's sick himself. That's their answer. The answer is always the person praying for himself is going to be answered. But there's a technical problem. You know what the technical problem is? Usually the person that's sick, since he's sick, he can't have concentration. He doesn't have proper concentration. He's, he, he's tarud, he's busy, he's, he's bothered. So he can't have proper concentration. Because of that, it's better of a tefillah of somebody else for him. However, though, if he's able to have kavana, if they're able to have proper concentration, for sure, their tefillah is much stronger than any other person's tefillah. And that's what Yishmael, which means Yishmael was able to have kavana. So since Yishmael was able to have kavana, his tefillah was even better than someone else. But you're right. If it's going to be a person, and that's the answer in the Gemara. Because each one of these Amuraim, right, when they asked them, right, they said they preferred, they had so much of the, they didn't want, which means that it was such a thing, they weren't able to concentrate. Since they weren't able to concentrate, you needed, right, somebody else external to come and to help them. That's the first answer of the Mizrahi and the Bartanura. A second answer of the Maharal Miprag, the Maharal Miprag comes and he says, right, and he says like this, he says, really, Bemet, the question was not a good question. He says, why? What was the question? We said that if a person's in jail, how does he take himself out of jail? So he says, it's not true. Nobody's taking him out of jail. You know why? Hashem is the one that's healing. It's not you. If a person's sick and they're praying to Hashem, who cures them? They themselves or Hashem? Hashem. So it's not the case that a person that's in jail cannot take himself out of jail. So then why exactly did they do that? So he says the concept of taking out their hands and bringing them out is, is that sometimes you need somebody from the outside to strengthen them, right? And therefore, they're going to get the refuah shalema. That's why. But it's not because he's taking himself out of jail. But now he comes, comes out of Chida and he brings down the Arizal HaKadosh. And listen to this. The Arizal HaKadosh comes and he says, what, what exactly happened? Certain times you need, if it's just going to be a regular case, so then you're right, a regular tefillah will help. And then the tefillah of a regular person on himself will help more than anybody else. Certain cases are exceptions to the rule that you need a bigger miracle. When you need a big, bigger miracle, you need protection. There you need protection. What do you mean protection? You need palanka, right? You need poles. Who's, who's pulling the strings? The tzaddikim or the big rabbis. He says, what was that? He said, that was the exact same thing what happened here. The Gemara says that when a person has a sick person in their house, what is he supposed to do? go to a rabbi and tell him about it. So that way the rabbi will pray for them and hopefully he'll become better. Okay? So therefore what happened was, is like this. Usually, right, a tefillah of themselves is much more powerful. But sometimes you need protexia. When is that protexia? Right? Why is it that Rivka did not have it? The Gemara says, right, the reason why is because what we mentioned in the previous shiur, that there was a reason why Rivka was barren. Rivka was barren because of the biracha of Lavan. Meaning even though the Rasha came and gave her a biracha, Hashem wanted that people shouldn't think that Hashem listens to the biracha of the meaning that Kilu ah, biracha of Reshaim helps. 
So Kishmar who did the exact opposite effect. What's the exact opposite effect? She was sterile. So now it doesn't even help her own tefillot on herself. She needed the tzaddik ben tzaddik. She needed the tzchak avinu. That that's why the Rashi says that a tzaddik ben tzaddik is greater than a tzaddik ben rasha. That even though she was also tzaddiket, but she needed the protection from a tzaddik ben tzaddik. She needed a big rabbi to come and to intervene on her behalf. And that intervening on her behalf was, is that now she's going to pray and she's going to say, listen, look what's going on. She's coming and so he's coming and he's praying. That's why it's only mentioned his prayer over her. It's not mentioned her own prayer on herself because technically, even though usually a person's own prayer on themselves is good, right? And it's even listened to even more than other people's prayer. Here you needed protectia. Here you needed something much more. So because you needed something much more, that's why it was completely different. It's completely different talacha. And that's why the Torah comes and it teaches us. So alacha we actually learn that in every single suffering or anything that we need, sometimes we have to understand that we have to pray ourselves. And many times we have to pray ourselves and that tefillah is even more listened to than the tefillah of acherim, than the tefillah of somebody else on us, right? And that's what you have to do. And you have to try to get them, try to get them to pray. But sometimes we need that heavenly help. And that's when we have to realize that we always go to the Chachamim, the Tzadikim, the big Tzadik Yador, and we ask them for Tefilot, because sometimes to annul those decrees, we really do need the protection, we do need that help, that heavenly help from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So now it actually understand, right, the two differences. Meaning if somebody is going to ask you one second, which Tefilah is better answer? The one of yourself, the sick person, or another person on you? And now you understand what's going on. And that in essence was actually the Machloke between Yaakov and Rachel. Rachel she comes and she didn't have children. So she comes to Yaakov and she tells Yaakov, right? What? Give me children. And if not, meta anochi, it's like I'm dead. What does Yaakov answer? Yaakov answers, HaKosh Baruch Hu stopped me from having children. He stopped you from having children, right? So therefore you pray. What are you asking me to pray? Now, she, he was correct in the fact that she has to pray. But she was trying to get the Berachah the Tzaddik that maybe this is something which is more powerful. And therefore, I need the Brachava Tzadik to intervene. And that's why the Midrash actually says that Yaakov Avinu was, what? This is how you answer a woman that's suffering? Forget about now that it was your wife, right? That it was Rachel, that it was his wife. At the end of the day, somebody comes to you to pray, pray for them. Because every prayer makes a difference. 100% the tefillah of, a, of a, a sick person in himself, more, 10 times, but much better, just like by Ishmael. But sometimes it doesn't help. But again, as we mentioned in the previous shoot as well, again, Many times we don't know the reasons why a person has to come and they have to pray or why is it that Hashem didn't answer them that quickly. And therefore what we have to do is we have to continue coming and praying and praying and praying, being insisting and praying. Bezrat Hashem HaKosh Baruch Hu will always come and answer our tefillot.